Sean, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today I gotta answer some questions. Will Ugly God fall off? And will the booty tape be successful? Now, obviously, this is a continuation of the last video. Didn't hit that last topic, but people have been wanting to know, and I got my answer. I don't know. But now that we got that out of the way, we can hop into some interesting questions and ways to think about Ugly God and his success so far that might help you come to your own possible conclusion. So let's start with that booty tape, y'all. If you watched the first video I did on Ugly Guy, you have to think about the fact that he was making what I call meme music, and those were short songs, about two minutes long, at least his most popular songs that he has on his SoundCloud right now, and because they're short, they're more potent and get the ideas that he wants to come across to the audience in a way that leaves them excited at the end of the day. And the only reason that really matters is when people start to think about actual albums, it starts to get into people's head that they have to create an album and provide this different type of experience, different level of experience. I don't know if the fans would be expecting and demanding three minute plus songs in a traditional way, but hey, maybe Ugly God might feel the pressure to make something that fits the format of a traditional album as opposed to continuing to explore his own unorthodox way of lighting up the industry. So the question there is with the booty tape being an official album project, Will he change the way he approaches and will he be successful in that approach if he does? Ugly Guy basically has this interesting autobiographical satire type thing going on which is basically like he's making fun of himself, his life, but has he had new experiences? But he's done it in a pretty narrow fashion as far as the subject matter that he's talked about. Now, what I think could be very interesting is if he had some new experiences as he's blown up in the back end that he starts to make fun of and bring in that comedic approach. Not only do we get to watch his growth and trajectory, but it could be very interesting and I think it could be a very clean way of how he can evolve and remain authentic to his brand because we have pretty much nobody who's really had his type of approach and honesty that has risen up in the industry while letting us in on it from a comedic perspective. So I love to see Ugly God really just talk about his life, but his new life. A little less about being that regular dude, which he isn't anymore. But now let's talk long term. Some of the questions you wanna ask when you think about long term and will he fall off or not, based on a lot of people's definition, even though I think a lot of people's definition of fall off is kinda of trash, is really, really comes down to his fan base. As of now, it seems that Ugly God's audience is about 50 to 58% male and then about 42% female. And I don't know the exact age, but I know it skews younger. And just for the sake of example, let's pick 15 through 18. Let's say the Ugly God's audience, the sweet spot was 15 through 18. Well, you have to consider that next year, those people are going to be 16 through 19. Then they're gonna be 17 through 20. With his approach and the content being what it is so far, what people, a lot of people just generally speaking might call immature, as that audience ages out, will they outmature ugly guys' music? Will he evolve with them? Because the thing is, when a lot of what you do is basically comedic and you think about comedians, comedians can't come back with the same joke again and again and again without people getting tired of it. And then you think about the fact of a younger audience getting older and people considering some of his content more immature, well, as he, the audience gets older, you know, people like to switch how they think and they like to feel like I'm grown now. And that change perspective can be a risk to make ugly guy for those people to seem as something for kids or for a younger audience. Is an option for him. He could continue to just try to target and retarget a younger audience, but I don't think that would be the best route. That's probably one of the biggest challenges of him falling off or not. Not to mention regular industry BS of him being supported in the right way, what his team looks like. That's a huge thing. Lil Yachty has a great team and quality control, but will Ugly Guy have a great team? I don't really know his team like that. I think he signed to Asylum, something like that, but I don't know the team. We have to see them execute for his brand because he has a very particular brand. So they could be a good team, but not a good team for him. So it seems there's probably about two routes for Ugly Guy. Well, three if you consider falling off, but I don't want to do the fall off. I like dude. From what I know about him, that is. He can either evolve and continuously grow his audience, but that evolution will also involve changing his content 
in different ways because this current content is almost felt like an inside joke, right? Which have made it so viral. You're like, yo, have you ever heard of Ugly Guy? Have you ever heard of Ugly Guy? Have you heard his song? But it's not like his current content could get so huge that you would hear on a pop level scale because pop radio wouldn't play that kind of stuff without censoring it. Plus, I could never imagine myself around my mom listening like, and then of course the other route is him remaining at the high ceiling that he already has, but just continuing, continuing to feed a strong cult fan base. How he do that? I don't know. That's all up to Ugly. Ask certain questions and watch to see what those answers happen to be. That's it. Y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.